Hi everyone, welcome back and thank you for joining us for day 35 of our Grace Happens devotional series. I'm thankful you're with us today. If you've missed any videos, head over to our Facebook page to check them out. Today's reading is chapter 35 of Grace Happens, which is called To Hell and Back. And though it may not seem like it from the title, it's a love story you don't want to miss. So be sure to take some time to read it today. Back during high school, my basketball coach would set certain times during the summer months for weight training. Those times were usually early mornings, and it was optional. I remember committing to make every weight session other than when I was on vacation or traveling for club ball. There were only a handful that committed to these weight sessions and showed up faithfully during those early summer mornings. Many of our teammates were sleeping in or just hanging out. I had to not only have the discipline to wake up early, but also to not stay out too late so I could function at weights the next morning. This not only made me a better athlete and helped me accomplish some dreams and goals I had as an athlete, but it also gave me some amazing relationships. I have fond memories of those times and would not have those if I had taken the easy shortcut of sleeping in and worrying about basketball only during basketball season. It was definitely the harder decision then, but there's no question it improved my life in more ways than just the immediate benefit of getting physically stronger. We love shortcuts, don't we? We want everything fast these days. We have on-demand movies and TV shows, food, groceries, and now even new cars delivered to our doorsteps, and news from all around the world at our fingertips while it's happening. We don't wait for much of anything anymore. There's really nothing wrong with all the instant gratification as long as we remember that instant results don't apply to any of the really important things in life. It's fine to get freaky fast delivery from Jimmy John's as long as you don't start looking for a freaky fast fix for your marriage, your parenting, or your character. All really important things in life take time, effort, and patience. That's why the Bible gives us so many farming metaphors. Farmers are really patient people. They may not want to be, but they don't really have any other choice. When your job is to work really hard on things that aren't going to have any results until months later, you don't really get to be impatient, especially when a huge portion of the work, at least at first, is pouring water on dirt. God gave us all kinds of reminders of this reality. Think about children for a minute. It takes a really long time for a person to grow up, or even to be born. From the time we're conceived, it takes nine months before we're even ready to be born. And trust me, it's a long nine months. Then we're born, and that's a bit of a process. It's called labor for a reason. But all that just to get us into the world. Then, when we're born, we can't do much of anything for months. We can't communicate for close to a year. We can't walk either. We don't even reach our full size for more than a decade. When is the last time you worked on a single project that took 20 years to be finished? God does it all the time with every one of us. But when it comes to our habits and character, we get frustrated when we go to church on Sunday, decide we're going to make a change, and then don't see any results. By Monday afternoon, listen guys, this life with God is a race, but it's not a sprint. Becoming the people God wants us to become is going to take our whole lives because it's worth it. The truth is, there's no such thing as a shortcut. Have you ever noticed that there are 39 books of the Bible before we even get to Jesus? That's well over a thousand pages, even if the writing is small and the pages are big. And a lot of it is confusing and a little weird. It's hard to understand at times. It takes work. So why wouldn't God just give us the most important stuff right up front? Why don't we start with Jesus? Why doesn't he make it a little easier? I think one reason is because he wants us to remember that there are no shortcuts. He wants us to remember that great things are worth waiting and working for. The challenge today. You probably already know today's challenge, but I'll say it anyway. Give up your shortcuts. Spend some time today looking at your life and ask yourself, where are the shortcuts? Are you expecting instant results at work? in your marriage or dating relationships? Are you expecting your kids to be completely different after just one conversation with them? Have you changed your financial habits, but you're not seeing the results you want yet? Have you made some decisions during this Road to Recovery sermon series 
but you're getting discouraged because you're not seeing big results yet? Start with just one thing. Maybe it's something you want to see happen in your financial life. Maybe it's a relationship or a project at work. Maybe it's a new skill you're trying to learn. Commit to the long road. If it's taking time, good. All great things take time. So keep pouring water on the dirt and let, let God worry about the growth. Someday you'll see it. But for now, if it's taken too long, thank God it is. That means it's important. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much for this reminder today, God. Especially in this world of things being delivered instantaneously almost, God. We expect instant results, and we think the shortcut is the best way most of the time, God. I appreciate your consistent reminder that the long road, though it may be difficult, is worth it, God. Thank you for taking the time to love on me and change me, God, even though I know it's a long road. God, I ask that each person watching this devotion would take some time out of their day today and think about any shortcuts in their life, God. I pray that we would all examine our lives and decide to take the long road. God, thank you for continuing to pour into us. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Have a great one. Bye.